Do you want to make a comment, Chief? With your permission, Mr. Yes. Chairman? Well, first of all, uh, as the staff report shows and as the Legislative Analyst's Office has indicated in commentary, the collaborative courts movement, if you will, originated in the trial courts throughout the United States. And California was among the leaders in the 1980s and early 90s. Uh, there's a very uh, helpful study that was performed by the Center for Court Innovation from New York at the request of the Judicial Council of California in 2005 called California's Collaborative Justice Courts. And while it's nine years old, it's pertinent to the array of collaborative courts that exist here in our state and the functions that they perform and their unique characteristics. The history of the growth of this movement, I think, is usefully illustrated there. As the chair knows, our chief justice formed the first domestic violence collaborative court in Sacramento County when she was a superior court judge in this county. I served for four years as the felony drug court judge in my court during my career of service. And I also developed the uh, group of stakeholders that designed and stood up our Prop 36 court, the Substance Abuse and Crime Prevention Act of 2000 court, which was modeled on drug courts in the early 2000s. Uh, it was during that period of time that I received some sound advice and came to know Judge Steve Manley, well known in these circles. Uh, that's a long way of saying that the Chief Justice and I are true believers. Uh, we support collaborative justice courts because they reduce recidivism. They reduce costs. And perhaps as important as all, they produce positive social change. Today, if the judicial branch in California were well funded, there would be very little discussion that I would care to waste your time on concerning this topic. However, we are in, in, in an environment in our court system throughout California where there are self-help centers who service people for whom English is not a first language and do not have adequate staffing. There are children who are awaiting child custody and visitation orders from overcrowded family law courts who have to wait too long, we all agree. There are parents who are desperately financially strapped in family law cases and are awaiting child support and spousal support orders from overcrowded courts that can't provide them as quickly as they would wish. So as desperate a need as the collaborative court movement has, we must be vigilant at this time when the judicial branch is frankly in a state of triage, that any plea for reinvestment be for the entire system and not for one element at the expense of another. I've had the good fortune to visit almost 50 of the 58 trial courts since I last had the opportunity to speak before you last year during budget hearings. And I can tell you from those meetings that each court has addressed unique community needs differently, has prioritized the most difficult problems its communities face in coming to court differently to meet those different circumstances. And there's an array of them. Collaborative courts are important to all of us, as you see. This was a movement that began within the court system. A well-funded court system will produce a healthy collaborative court system. Make no mistake about it. History proves it is so. We have a number of court executive officers here today and judges, including, I believe, Judge Manley, and presiding judges, including, incidentally, my colleagues, Judge Walsh, who is chair of the Judicial Council's presiding judge's standing advisory committee, and his vice chair, Judge Slough, uh, who will undoubtedly speak to this topic, among others. Uh, I guess the most that I can tell you is that we ask for a healthy reinvestment in our system, and in so doing, we can ensure that we continue to grow the collaborative courts to achieve the objectives the LAO has set out. Whatever this body chooses to do, may I suggest to you that the Judicial Council and the trial courts have demonstrated themselves to be the subject matter experts in this area. And to the extent that you choose to go forward, the council must be central to your planning processes as a consequence. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Uh, Department of Finance. Andre Bezos, Department of Finance. Um, the administration believes that these, uh, these types of collaborative courts can um, play an important role in reducing recidivism and preventing incarceration. Um, and uh, we would be happy to provide any feedback on uh, any proposal that ultimately comes forward. And Denise. 
Chairman? Uh, forgive me. We, we handed a fact sheet out to your yep. members for today uh, so that it could be plain just how many uh, individual courts exist because many of the counties opposite which there are check marks in your grid have multiple courts. So for numeric uh, information, I, I think that would be illustrative. There are, as of January of this year, 378 collaborative courts of all kinds mm -hmm. uh, throughout California, just as an example. And other uh, data is provided there for your convenience. Thank you again. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions from members? <coughs> yes, Ms. Melendez. Thank always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. It's always a pleasure to be here. Um, I have personal experience with some of these programs in my county. Um, we used youth court prior to the sheriff cutting that program, um, but youth court is a very effective program, I think, in, in getting kids back on the right track, and it's a good intervention program. And um, that is the one I have uh, specific experience with, although I'm sure these others um, are probably just as effective. I think getting the kids... Uh, you know, before they get into the adult system is is probably better for everyone in the long run. Um, but I would like to ask you if you could just, uh, perhaps Department of Finance could weigh in or um, you yourself with a, uh, a very brief and succinct answer. How did you come up with the number 20 million? Well, this was uh, not uh, a part of our budget request. Our budget request has been for uh, reinvestment in the entire branch. We're responding to an agenda item that was proposed by staff to this body. Okay, so how did we come up with 20 million? Anybody? Anybody? He can't talk about it on the mic. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to get an answer. We just have to. If I were to boil it down to the simplest terms, um, it's an amount of money that we believe we can cobble together to put this program on through through the speaker's office and in our office. And, and there any other questions from any of the other members? So, you can ask a question. Okay. Okay, so this is how we're, we're going to go ahead and proceed. Um, I'm going to recommend that we direct staff to work with the LAO, the AOC, the BSCC, and the DOF, the whole alphabet soup of justice people to identify the pro to, to identify and to oversee the grant program considering this relationship to prison and jail overcrowding mandates um, Two, direct staff to work with LAO the AOC the BSCC and the DOF to draft grant program guidelines in associated language and that we consider appropriating $20 million from the general fund in support of a new grant program intended to expand California's collaborative justice court program. Said new. Yes. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll make that motion with the, the note that while we do need to address the issue generally at the courts, and I understand the courts wanting to uh, us and we take seriously this notion of, of funding the, the program in total. But given our responsibilities under realignment where, again, money is going down to the counties and it's not money that, that we're going to be necessarily influencing because it's the county's money and they're spending it the way they want to, I think it is also our responsibility to provide examples and incentives for counties to, to do things that we know are going to be solving a multiple of problems, which include reducing recidivism, streamlining the way that the courts operate and operate within their communities. Collaborative courts have proven to be some of those programs. So I think it's well worth our investment and well worth our consideration to see how we can best 
move in that direction and facilitate getting some programs on the ground and providing some good incentives and examples and best practices for counties to operate. Right, and I, and I think the direction we're going in is, is especially in a grant program, um, is provide an opportunity for courts to voluntarily Correct. go into the program. If they decide not to, I guess we could use that $20 million for something else. Right. Okay. If we get to $20 million, we need to work through it. So is there a motion? That was my motion. A second? Joan Sawyer? Aye. Melendez? Not voting. Um, Rodriguez? Aye. Stone? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Okay. Is there any public comment on this item? And then I'll do general public comment. Any? Mm -hmm. We're arm wrestling for public comment. Oh. Okay, and and keep it brief and don't talk past yes. Don't don't talk past yes. Yeah. I learned that a long time ago trying lawsuits. When the judge is in your favor, sit down. Yes. I'm Marcia Slough. I'm the presiding judge from San Bernardino County. I will try to speak very briefly on the issues that you've addressed here today, and also a little bit and even briefer on a broader topic. The issues of collaborative courts and the issues of a proper dependency court, including properly staffing the litigants in dependency court, is critical to all of us. But we have to put it in the framework of where we've been over the last five years. Last year, granted, and we appreciated that we got a $63 million increase to the branch as a whole, but that came after five years of budget cuts that totaled a billion dollars to the branch, almost a half a billion dollars just to the trial courts. San Bernardino and Riverside counties, counties within the Inlet Empire, were exponentially impacted by those years of cuts. We had no fat to trim. In San Bernardino County at home, we have a caseload that says we should have 1,500 employees to handle. And in San Bernardino, we have fewer than 900. We should have 156 judges to handle that caseload, and we have 86. Last year alone, we closed five courthouses in our county, 14 courtrooms. It goes without saying, and I'm not trying to be facetious when I say, you cannot have a collaborative court in a closed courthouse. We need to work on our efforts to increase funding for dependency council. We need to work on our efforts, and I applaud you, to increase funding for very important collaborative courts. But we also have to have courtrooms that are open. San Bernardino County is a county that is larger than 20,000 square miles. We have families that have to drive 225 miles one way to get to the dependency courthouse. Those are families yeah. in crisis. We have three judges handling our dependency calendar. Our dependency caseloads have increased 20 percent. I respectfully say to you, this is not a San Bernardino issue. It is not a Riverside County issue. The cuts have hammered all of the trial courts. And I respectfully say $100 million will only result in further closures and reduce services throughout this state. This state that has had 51 courthouses closed deserves better justice, not for the sake of the courts, but for the sake of the citizens that we all serve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, could you hold your comment for one minute? We're, we're going to get some votes in. You're welcome. On consent issue one, CHP's capital outlay, um, Melendez, aye. On judicial branch issue number, t or, uh, consent issue number two, judicial branch cap outlay, Melendez, aye. On uh, on uh, judicial branch issue number one, uh, Children's Law Center of California, Melendez, aye. Thank you. Um, because this line looks 
extremely long. Um, can we keep our comments down to one minute? I'm sorry, but it just and I, and I want to hear from everyone, but we're, the only way we're going to do this, we're going to have to be a little more disciplined. Uh, so one minute apiece. Thank you, Assemblymember John Sawyer and members of the subcommittee. I'm Brian Walsh, presiding judge of Santa Clara County Superior Court, and as Judge Starr said, head of the trial uh, court presiding judges. First, I want to thank you for your support for trial, uh, of the trial courts over the years and assure you that with the kind of funding that the Chief Justice has requested, we will support the collaborative courts. The trial courts are committed to trial, uh, collaborative courts. Santa Clara County is co committed to uh, collaborative courts. Indeed, our, the reunification rate of families in our dependency court, because of the resources we put into it, 80 percent, nearly double the state average. We believe in collaborative courts. The survey that Judge Jarr made uh, mention of, I got a copy at noon, it tells us that with the reinvestment of $612 million, 88 percent of our trial courts would use the funds to improve or expand collaborative courts. Ninety percent would use them to reopen courtrooms and courthouses. Ninety-eight percent of the courts would be able to improve self-help services, and 100 percent of the courts could use that money, would use that money to improve services, to cut delays in hearings and cut long lines and improve services throughout the courts. But I want, if I may, to touch one sensitive issue. Let's call it earmarking. The notion that you have very, very clear sense of what your constituents need from our court, and we understand that. But we ask you to avoid granting money or, or, or uh, funding our courts with strict limitations on how it is spent. Now, dependency council, that's a separate issue, and I understand the difference there. And the need to put money from 109, perhaps, into court collaborative courts, Judge Manley's kind of courts, that makes sense. But generally, as to court funding, please let the courts, who know their communities well, who know their community needs well, okay. decide where it must be spent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Chair and members, my name is Kelly Bennett. I come to you as a local elected official from the city of Murrieta in southwest Riverside County. I'm a former mayor, a former mayor pro tem, and serving out my final term as a council member. I've also served as the chair of Western Riverside Council of Governments, and I also happen to serve as an attorney in the area and also as a judge pro tem, serving the Riverside Court on a voluntary basis. In southwest Riverside County, and I'm fortunate to be in uh, Vice Chair Melendez's district. Uh, she, she is correct. We have had youth court programs and other diverge, diversion programs. In the city of Murrieta, I, along with our police chief, started a youth court pro program in 2007. We brought the city of Temecula on board, and we have about a 97 percent success rate. We brought that program forward without court resources and with it was a pure public private partnership there are no, no court resources being invested in it because we believe our courts need to have the reinvestment mm -hmm. so the judiciary can serve the public thank you thank you good afternoon james clark i'm an attorney here in sacramento also mm -hmm. speaking on behalf of the california employment lawyers association um, i'm here to basically advocate for court funding whether it be dependency court or collaborative court, anything that we're able to improve is going to help the, the totality of our court system, um, which it is in desperate need. Um, in, in our situation, um, we, we, we're in the civil courts, not in the criminal courts. They get precedence over us. And um, <clears throat> one of my clients, Mr. McDaniel, is going to come up and tell his story about the, the delays in the civil courts are affecting the, the blue-collar workers, the, the people who we all represent and um, it's, 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 um, it's a crisis. So without that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. McGann. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tim McDaniel. I'm a truck driver for Mondelez International, which is a large snack company. I'm concerned with my access to justice because I'm a whistleblower. And uh, I've been employed from, with Mondelez for almost three years. And they owe me six months worth of wages. And I had to hire an attorney to pay me uh, in order to try to collect my wages. And uh, with filing my complaint in Sacramento County Court, it's going to take almost 10 months before I can get in front of a judge. And uh, the delays are killing me. And uh, I'm here to advocate for more money for our court system. 
especially the protections that all of you have given us whistleblowers and then to delay it and sit here with no money. They, they, they're holding my wages and it's just not right. I shouldn't have to wait 10 months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Libby Sanchez on behalf of the California Public Defenders Association, in addition to Laborers Local 777 and 792 and San Diego County Court Employees Association, all representing court employees, in strong, strong support of the proposal to allocate $20 million for specialty courts. The public defenders have seen enormous success with specialty courts throughout the state. We would ask you as you continue to consider this to consider including pre-plea diversion programs as part of the specialty courts as that's the surest guarantee to make sure that individuals who successfully complete their program are going to be fully employable and able to you know work amongst us in our in our communities um, when they are when they are completed additionally we would urge you to consider having community partners um, in the local communities um, participate finally on behalf of the unions I represent I humbly request um, that you look at continuing to do dedicated funding such as this because we have had enormous problems where um, funding has been thank allocated you. but not used appropriately in our courts thank you Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Cope. I'm the presiding judge of the Riverside Superior Court. Very briefly, I often see my job as squeezing a balloon. And when I, when I get restrictions on what resources I have to allocate in one place, that means restrictions or that means resources coming out of another place. No judge, especially one who sat on a juvenile court, would argue against dependency council funding or against collaborative courts. But my question then will have to be, from where do I get the money? Do I take it out of family law assistance, uh, self-help assistance centers? Do I take it out of the probate departments? Do I take it out of other needed departments where real people are finding real day-to-day -day, uh, devastating issues? The gentleman who got to court in 10 months was fairly lucky. Um, uh, it often takes a lot longer than that. Thank you very much for your time. No, thank you. All right, good afternoon. Uh, yeah. I'm Brad Nelson. I'm the presiding judge of the Solano Superior Court. Mm -hmm. And we have just a couple of collaborative courts on your list, but we actually have a couple others in the works, including a Veterans Treatment Court. Mm -hmm. And we have a DUI in the schools of collaborative court. Uh, not quite the same type of collaborative court, but we, uh, our judges and our commissioners go out to high schools in the area five to six times a year and put on a real DUI in the schools trial real defendant, real attorneys prosecuting and defending them um, to educate the high school kids about the dangers of drinking and driving. So all very important. We're able to put that program on for about $1,000 a year. So it doesn't cost that much to run some of these collaborative courts. And a lot of the funding comes from grants, federal and state grants, all across the board. Uh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big supporter of collaborative courts. but. Uh, Pulling the funding, uh, dedicating the funding to collaborative courts, I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I know that it could impact decisions I have to make if it reduces our overall funding. Thank you. I, have, uh, I know I'm, my time is up. I have with me Kathleen Thompson. She's our court investigator, supervisor. She's going to give you just a thumbnail sketch of some of the problems her office faces because we don't have the money. Thank you. Hi, Kathleen Thompson. Um, thank you. Due to funding shortages, my office is not able to do conservatorship reviews timely. We have a severe backlog. Since taking over as a supervisor three years ago, we have removed a conservatee from an addicted squatter's house where her conservator dumped her and took her entire estate. Um, she contracted a sexually transmitted disease and eventually died from that disease. We've removed a conservatee from a registered sex offender's home, and he later admitted um, that he had been sexually abused there. We've removed a conservatee from a mold-infested bedroom with no heat, and she had a severe respiratory infection. The conservator stole over $500,000 from her estate. 
without doing these reviews, we're the eyes and um, ears of the courts, and without doing these timely reviews, there's um, a lot of people at risk, both um, personally and financially. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Victor Orozco. I am a court employee. I've been uh, with the courts for about 23 years uh, with the uh, Los Angeles Superior Court. I am also a member of uh, SEIU, Local 721. And I just strongly uh, urge you to restore the needed funding uh, to the trial courts. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Gardner. I'm the Assistant Public Defender for San Bernardino County. I'd like to talk to you briefly about uh, the, what the, the significant impacts are on our clients, the indigent folks in San Bernardino County, uh, what impacts the court closures have had on them. Uh, they've been very drastic. Uh, we public defenders obviously believe, believe strongly in the collaborative court process. We're big supporters of it. We recognize the value in it. Uh, but the bottom line is the court co you, you can't have a successful collaborative court if the folks can't get to court. And in San Bernardino County, uh, the court closures have literally made it a question of whether or not our clients can even get to court to exercise their fundamental constitutional rights. Um, basically, when they shut down the Barstow Courthouse, it added another 50 to 75 mile round trip uh, for our clients to get to the Victorville Courthouse. There is no public transportation that gets them into the city of Victorville before court starts that day. Um, and when it does get them to the city about 9 o'clock in the morning, 30 minutes after court started, it's two miles away. The last thing I want to say is we have a lot of clients who when they do show up to court, they make all their efforts to get there, they just want to plead guilty so they don't have to go through the process again. It's a big problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Michael Furman. I'm the Assistant District Attorney in San Bernardino County. Uh, I am piggybacking on uh, Mr. Gardner. We work with them. Mm -hmm. We are also supportive of the collaborative courts. We adopt the position of uh, Judge Jar and Judge uh, Slough. Uh, Unlike Barstow, we also have a court closure in Needles, which is 220 miles from the county seat where some of the dependency matters occur. So now people have to travel 220 miles one way. Victims of crime, interestingly enough, this week is Victim Crime Week. Victims of crime, and most recently a 15-year-old in a robbery, had to travel 220 miles one way to testify for his rights. 220 miles is like is the equivalent from going from 700 Exposition Boulevard in Los Angeles to Ensenada, Mexico, one way. That's how far he had to travel one way for his rights. And we ask that you look at restoring uh, the uh, criminal justice system funding so that these people will have a voice again, too. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Barbara Ferguson, San Bernardino <coughs> County. Um, my sheriff, John McMahon, asked me to come up and testify on his behalf. Uh, we're in support of the uh, trial court and the collaborative court funding. It's had a huge impact on the sheriff's department. When the Needles courts closed, our deputies out there had to travel to Barstow until the Barstow courts closed. From Needles to Barstow, it's about 150. <laughs> plus miles and into um, Victorville it's um, uh, 180 miles and then when the uh, Barstow courts closed some of those folks had to go to traffic court in Joshua Tree which is 155 miles from Needles it doesn't just affect the sheriff's department and the overtime that we have to pay when a deputy leaves the Needles station to go to court we have to cover that deputy shift if that deputy's on duty or if that deputy works graveyard. We have to pay someone overtime to cover their shift because they can't work graveyard and then drive for four hours or three hours to go to court and then go back. So um, we are in very much support of the um, trial court and collaborative court funding. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Bruner and I'm the vice president of the High Desert Bar Association for San Bernardino County. I also a privately practicing attorney. I practiced family law for 10 years. Family law is one of those areas where families are in turmoil. They're going through a crisis. When the Barstow Court closed, we had almost 1,600 family law cases having to go to Victorville. Because of that, I've had experienced clients having to walk home from the Victorville Court, 
having to take settlement offers that are not in their favor because they can't get to the court. I've also experienced extreme delays where family members or my clients could not get the support that they needed to support themselves and their children. The court closure has caused severe hardships for my clients in the family law area. And so we are in support of the collaborative court process and also restoring the budget uh, with regard to the trial courts. Thank you. Thank you.